hello to my pre-calculus kids. Welcome back from spring break. I've missed you guys. And it's been longer than spring break, so I've really missed you guys. And I'm still missing you because I'm talking to an iPad, not to you face-to-face. -face, so, My goal this week is to look at Lesson 5-5. So we're going to continue along in Chapter 5 for the right now. So my goal this week is Lesson 5-5. And then you will also have homework this week. Now, period two, you will normally be a Monday class. But this week you're a Wednesday class. And so your homework will be due the following Wednesday. Period five, you are technically a Friday class. So um, you, you officially don't need to check in here until Friday. But then your homework will be due the following Friday. And I'll talk about that at the end and with dates and everything. But Lesson 5-5 five five is learning the Law of Signs. So if you would have your calculator by your side, that would be helpful too. Um, the unfortunate, the way I'm, the program I'm using to do this, I can't show my calculator screen on the screen here. However, we can, I can talk about it. And I would definitely encourage you to make sure in the notes you're entering stuff in the calculator to make sure you get the right answers. And that way, if something doesn't work out right, you'll know now before you get to the homework. So, the law of signs. Okay. The law of signs is a way to help us find missing sides and missing angles in triangles that are not right triangles. So, you'll notice here in any triangle ABC with angles A, B, and C. So, notice the angles are denoted by the capital A, B, and C. Opposite sides, A, B, and C, so little a, B, and C, respectively, the following equation is true. So before I talk about that equation, notice where angle A is, the side opposite it is little a. Angle B, the side opposite it, so straight across is B, and the same thing with C. Our equation is tr that is true says the sine of angle A divided by side A is equivalent to the sine of angle B divided by side B, which is also equivalent to the sine of angle C divided by side C. So I realize it's a three-part equation, but what we actually do is we take two pieces of that equation together and basically set up a proportion. Okay, um, it's actually, mathematically, it's not difficult to use. It's just getting the setup. Um, I don't mind teaching this section, so it'll be interesting without you being face-to-face -face with me, but I think we'll be able to handle this section. We'll find out, I guess. But Okay, so next part right here. Remember the acronyms AAS, ASA, SAS, and SSS from geometry? It's been a few, right? So our angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, and side, side, side. Okay, these apply to the law of sines and the law of cosines, which we learn in lesson 5-6. We also now, you didn't get to use these next ones in geometry, but we also now have AAA, so angle, 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 and SSA, side, side, angle, too. So we didn't get to use those before, but they do apply here. Now, today we are specifically talking about the law of sines, and you'll notice in the law of sines, the three that apply, angle, angle, side, angle side angle and side side angle so meaning if you're given an angle angle side so two angles next to each other and the following side or angle side angle where you have an angle the side between them and another angle or side side angle so two sides next to each other and then the following angle we can use the law of sines okay so example one is solving triangles that have either the angle angle side setup or angle side angle setup. So these two setups, notice you're basically given two angles. So with these two setups, you will always get a unique solution, which is not always to be said for all variations of law of signs. But there is one and only one solution. And that is basically anytime you are given two angles there will be one and only one solution. So the example we're doing here, ask us to solve 
triangle ABC. Given that angle A is 36 degrees, angle B is 48 degrees, and side A is 8. So, first of all, when they say solve, that basically means find all the missing pieces. So, in this case, they gave us angle A and angle B. I'm going to write some information down over here. So, they gave me angle A, which is 36 degrees. They gave me angle B as 48 degrees. The angle that I don't know yet is angle C, so I have to find angle C. They give me side A, which is 8, but then they don't tell me side B and side C. So the three things we'll be looking for here are angle C, side B, and side C. Now, I want us to determine which of the three which one this is. Is this an angle-angle-side situation or angle-side-angle angle situation? If you go back and look at the triangle up here up top, we were given angle A, angle B, and side A. So the three pieces I underlined in red are what we are given. What order are those given in? Notice it's an angle, angle A, another angle B, and then a side. So this is an example of angle, angle, side. And so that's what falls into the classification here. Okay, so let's start working. We have one angle and two sides to follow, or to find. This is where I really wish you guys could talk to me. Anyone see the easy piece of this to find? You don't have to know anything about what I'm teaching today to find the first piece. And hopefully you are seeing that we can find an angle here. We can find angle C because what do we know about all three angles in a triangle? All three angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. Good. So what I'm just going to write out is that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. And so what we are given currently is 36 degrees plus 48 degrees plus some unknown angle C has to equal 180. I trust you can do the math. Add 36 and 48 and subtract from 180. So when you take 180 and subtract that 36 and 48, you should be getting, anyone got their calculators going? 96 degrees. So please watch. Anytime you're given two angles, the third angle is still very easy to find based on three angles equal 180 degrees. Okay, now we need to start finding our sides. And to find our sides, this is when our law of sines comes in. We need to pick two of those fractions from above where we know all but one piece. So the piece we're always going to have to use in this problem is sine, or angle A and side A because that's the pair we know. And then we'll take turns finding the other pair. So let's start with, we already know both A's. Let's start by finding the missing B. So I'm going to use the setup with the A's and the B's, meaning sine of angle A over side A equals sine of angle B over side B. That is the proportion I want to use. So notice I picked the A's because I already know both A's, and then B, I'm trying to find side B. So fill in what you know. The sine of A, which is 36 degrees, over side A, which is 8, 
equals the sine of B, so sine of 48 degrees, over side B, which is what we're trying to find. Okay, how do we solve? Basically a proportion when you have three of the four pieces. We can start by doing cross products. B times the sine of 36 degrees, if I multiply my diagonals, equals 8 times sine of 48 degrees. You'll notice I put that 8 in front of the sine because I do not want it mixed in with the 48. Very important when you put it on your calculator too. How do I solve for B? If it's B times the sine of 36 degrees, we're going to divide. So B is going to be 8 times sine of 48 degrees divided by sine of 36 degrees. At this point, it is a calculator problem. 8 times sine of 48 degrees divided by sine of 36 degrees. Now, one thing, what mode is your calculator going to need to be in today? And that is degrees. I don't think our calculators have been in degrees lately. So um, on my calculator, I just go to the mode button, which is next to the second button. And I arrow down to radian degree. I arrow over degree and I hit enter. And now degree is bolded and flashing. So now my calculator is in degrees. So. When you do this, 8 sine 48 divided by sine of 36, my calculator reads 10.11450794. I have two decimal places written down in my notes, so I have 10.11. And so B is approximately... 10.11. Okay. Now, you'll notice we have found angle C. We have found side B. We have one last piece to find, and that is side C. Now, as you go to set up side C, I hope that it's obvious that you now have to use sine C over side C. When you set up for the other piece, my recommendation is always go with the exact figures, meaning I would not encourage you to use side B because side B is an approximation. So we wanna use the A's again. So I'm gonna say sine of angle A divided by side A equals sine of angle C divided by side C. Fill in what you know. So like previously, the sine of 36 degrees divided by 8 equals the sine of C is 96 degrees divided by side C, which is what we're trying to find. Again, do cross products, multiply those diagonals. So C times sine of 36 degrees equals 8 times sine of 96 degrees. To solve and get C by itself, we're going to divide by sine of 36. So C is equal to 8 sine 96 degrees divided by sine of 36 degrees. Again, whoops, sorry about that. Punch it into your calculator. So 8 times sine of 96 divided by sine of 36. And my calculator reads 13.53585367. If I use nearest hundredths again, two decimal places, C is approximately 13.54. Okay.
Hopefully you didn't find the math too difficult. Hopefully you're kind of seeing the connections there. Now, one thing I want to point out, I want you to kind of look here. If you notice, C ended up being our longest side. Angle C also ended up being our largest angle. So something important to point out is that, please remember, the longest side is always opposite the largest angle. Just as the shortest side, so side A, is opposite the shortest or the smallest angle. So keep that in mind because that will be very important as we continue. Okay, so that is the pattern you will use anytime you are provided two angles, whether it be angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Now, example two is solving triangles with, and you'll notice it says the ambiguous case. So the ambiguous case here is when we are provided two sides, and those two sides are of the form side, side, angle. Okay, an example of side, side, angle is shown over in this triangle at the right, where we have angle A, the side across from it is BC, or if you prefer, this would be side A. This side over here, AB would be side C, if that helps you some. But this is an example of side, side, angle, because you get two neighboring sides and then the following angle. Now, this is the ambiguous case because there's more than one possible situation. Depending on how the sides are set up, we could have one triangle or one typical answer. We could have two triangles of answers, or we could have no triangles of answers. Okay, so it all depends how the numbers are laid out. So in here, based on that triangle at the right, say we are given angle A and side AB and BC. Keep in mind, side AB is basically side C and side BC is basically side A, if that helps, kind of helps me a little bit. Now, in the first situation, if angle A is obtuse, so the largest angle, there's one triangle possible as long as side A is bigger than side C. That's basically saying there's one triangle possible as long as the biggest side is opposite the biggest angle. However, there are no triangles possible if A is smaller than C. So that's saying that if the largest side is not opposite the largest angle, that triangle cannot exist. Another op, um, situation, if angle A is acute, there is a situation where there could be two triangles. And we'll talk about it. We're not actually going to solve them just because of not doing this face to face. But um, if C, side C is bigger than side A, then there's two triangles possible. However, there's only one triangle possible um, where either angle C is obtuse and one where angle C, oh, excuse me, I misread that. There are two triangles possible, one where angle C is obtuse and one where angle C is acute. And then thirdly, if angle A is acute, there is one triangle possible if side A is bigger than side C. Okay, and we're going to investigate um, three different possibilities here. Notice what it says here. The best way to determine which type of scenario we have is to sketch a triangle. Okay, um, I didn't do it up above, but up above I was using two angles, and that makes it a little more straightforward. Here, since we have the two sides, we're going to do some sketching. So, solve triangle ABC, given that A is 7, side A is 7, side B is 6, and angle A is 26.3 degrees. So, I'm going to start drawing my triangle here. And... You can draw your triangle however you want. Um, I'm 
I'm going to draw my triangle like this. And I'm going to call my triangle, triangle A, B, C. Um, let's see. We are given the angle A is 26.3 degrees. We are given that side A is 7, so side A is across the way. We are given that side B is 6, and that's going to be across from B. And then side C is not provided. Now, this situation right here, first of all, notice it's an example of side-side angle because there are two sides next to each other followed by an angle. And notice angle A, the provided angle, let's just go with the provided angle, is an acute angle. Now, in this case, they gave us B instead of C, but this is a situation where angle A is acute, there's going to be one triangle possible because side A is longer than the other provided side. So if you have an acute angle and the side provided across from that is the longer of the two sides, then there's going to be one example or one triangle. So, okay, you're given one angle and two sides. So unlike the last one, I cannot start by finding my missing angle because I have two missing angles. Notice the set of information we do have are the A's. So I'm going to have to do something with sine of angle A divided by side A. The other piece of information we have is side B. So we're going to have to use sine of B divided by B. Fill in the information you have. So the sine of 26.3 degrees over 7 is equal to the sine of B divided by 6. Okay, again, how do we solve? And just like last time, we're going to use cross products. This time, I'm going to say 7 times the sine of angle B is equal to 6 times the sine of 26.3 degrees. In order to get B by itself, that sine is attached to B. I'll talk about that in a moment, but you can go ahead and divide the 7 over. So I'm going to have the sine of B is equal to 6 sine 26.3 degrees divided by 7. Now, okay guys, put those brains to work. I know that sine B equals this fraction. I want to instead be able to write it as B equals. How do I get that B and that big fraction on the right to flip-flop. And remember what will flip-flop the input and the output, and that is the inverse. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use sine inverse. So sine negative 1, and it's going to be sine inverse of 6 sine 26.3 degrees over 7. And that right there is what you're going to enter into your calculator. I would strongly suggest you maybe pause this video if you need to and give it a try. So I'm going to talk my way through entering it right now. And that is, first of all, sine inverse. Remember to do sine inverse. That is the second function above sine. So I'm going to do second, and I'm going to hit the sine button. comes up sine negative 1. And then in there, I'm going to type my 6 sine 26.3 degrees divided by 7, or you can set up a fraction in there. So 6, and this is a regular sign this time, 26.3 degrees, into that parenthesis for the 26.3, divided by 7, and in that parenthesis. <clears throat> My calculator says 22.31976532. Um, 
for whatever reason, I have one decimal place on this problem. So I have 22.3 degrees. Okay, pause this video, try and figure out the calculator if you can. Um, if we're having some calculator issues, I do want to try and get together kind of a group video meeting at some point, and that is definitely something we can talk about there. So um, um, I'm also, through my iPad, I can FaceTime, so if that will help some of you, I could definitely set up a FaceTime if we need to figure out, talk about some of these calculator issues or just some of the problems in general. Okay, so we just found angle B. We already know angle A. What does that mean I can easily find now? And you don't need to use law of signs to do it. We can find angle C, yes? And in order to find angle C, all three angles in a triangle add up to be 180, right? So angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. That means, what do I have? 26.3 plus 22.3 plus angle C equals 180. Grab your calc there, do the math, and angle C is 131.4 degrees. Please notice, although I'm getting ready to say that, I just realized I didn't. C's are hard to tell apart. Notice what did I put in front of angle C? Or in front of the C for the angle, I put an angle mark. I'm realizing I didn't do it down here on B. The difference on the B though, capital V, B versus lowercase b, I can tell the difference, but I will go back and put it on the B down there. But the C's definitely makes life easier if you put the angle mark in front of it when it is an angle. Okay, last part of this problem. What am I missing? And hopefully you're realizing we're missing side C. So again, I would go back and use the given pair you know. Um, so I'm going to use the A's, so I'm gonna use sine of angle A over side A, and so if we're trying to find C's, it's going to be equal to sine of angle C divided by side C. Fill in your information. So the sine of 26.3 degrees divided by seven equals the sine of 131.4 degrees divided by C, which is what we're trying to find. I've got a fraction equal a fraction, so do your cross products. C times sine of 26.3 degrees equals seven times sine of 131.4 degrees. To solve for C, in this case, it's just C times sine of 26.3, so you can just divide. So C is going to be 7 sine 131.4 degrees divided by sine of 26.3 degrees. Again, try the calculator out. 7 sine 131.4 divided by sine 26.3. My calculator reads 11.8508664. If I round this to a decimal place, 11.85 can become 11.9. And there is my third and final missing piece. Okay, so hopefully you followed that. Again, it's solving proportions. You just have to remember how to deal with the trig functions. Okay, we're going to continue on to the back side of your notes. And as we continue on to the back sides, keep in mind, we are still working with this ambiguous case. 
Okay, so given a side-side angle situation, um, what the different possibilities are. So as I look at the next piece, we are being asked to solve triangle ABC, given that side A is 6, side B is 7, and side A is 30 degrees. Now, the situation you'll notice that is different from our last one. In our last one, we were given the angle, and of the two sides, the longer side matched up with that angle. In this situation, it's reversed. And so when that side that you're given is the shorter of the two sides, this is actually an example where there are two possible triangles. Now, um, a good description of this happens in your textbook. And I'm debating if I want to try and draw it or not, but if you want to check out the textbook at some point, it is figure... 5.19 on page 436 that can guide you through this problem, okay? And it gives you a good picture. But, and I don't even know if I want to draw this picture or not. The idea here, I think I'm going to draw the picture but we're not actually going to try and find the missing pieces. Um, it just gets a little confusing. So if I draw one triangle here, okay, and like the previous one, and triangle ABC, notice here what you're given is you're given, whoops, 30 degrees, a side A of 6, and a side B of 7. That is one of the triangles that can be drawn. Now, the alternative triangle that can be drawn is if you take that same triangle. I'm going to try this here. Oh, I, okay, I'm going to have to go back and make it dotted. If you take that same triangle and the idea is that the line I just made dotted can be folded underneath itself. And you know what? Let me put in some numbers here. This is six, right? This over here is seven. And this is 30 degrees. The idea is that this line that is 6, because it is shorter than the line that is 7, can be folded underneath. And so it can be folded and brought over here. And I'm not very good at drawing that. But so then your new triangle is this red triangle I'm drawing. Because what it's done is it's taken that line that is 6 and it folded it underneath itself. And so with that in mind, this six side that was over there to the right on the blue dotted line is now here. And so you would have triangle one here and triangle two over here. And you would have to find the missing pieces for both of them. Um, it gets a little complicated, which is why I'm deciding since we're not doing this face to face, I am opting to forego actually working these out. And I have pulled them out of the homework so you won't see any where you would have to work these out. I think it was 20 and 22 that I would have had you work these out and I decided to forego it this year. So again, that is just kind of the visual example. If you're interested, check out the book in um, page 436. Figure 519, and that will walk you through the problem there. With that, let's look at example C. And example C asks us to solve triangle ABC given that side A is 8 
side B is 15, and angle A is 100. So as I draw this this time, I need to draw angle A being obtuse. So I'm going to draw my triangle differently. Because I'm still, and it's just the way I'm choosing to draw, I'm keeping my A down here in the corner. And notice A is 100 degrees. There's angle A, B, C. Side A is 8, and side B is 15. So again, this is another side-side angle option. Now, as we proceed here, what do you notice? Angle A is obtuse. And angle A is obtuse, what should that mean about side A? Side A should be the longest. However, is side A the longest? No. So, are you guessing it out there? This is a situation where there are no triangles possible. Okay, and it's just, it's physically impossible for angle A to be the largest, but side A not to be the longest. So, what I will say here, no triangles possible. So it's kind of like a no solution. I know, your guys' favorite, right? Um, I am going to write an explanation here. And my explanation is that the obtuse angle must have the longest side opposite it. The obtuse angle must have the longest side opposite of it. Okay, so there's your side note of why it can't happen. Okay, so watch for that one. I can't remember if I have any of those happening in homework or not, but just watch for it. It is an option. Okay. Um, kind of getting high on time. I'm going to look at example three. I'm looking at what example four is right now, and I'm going to forego example four. Trying to remember, 38 in homework will pair up with example three. I'm trying to remember what 39 is, and I don't remember off the top of my head. So hopefully it'll be okay. Maybe I'll look, up, look it up here in a moment. But let's look at example three. So, Forest Ranger Chris Johnson at Ranger Station A sights a fire in the direction 32 degrees east of north. Ranger Rick Thorpe at Ranger Station B, 10 miles due east of A, sights the same fire on a line 48 degrees west of north. Find the distance from each Ranger Station to the fire. Okay, so let's start with a basic. Do you guys know your compass? Silly question, but we've got to know it. I don't know what mnemonic device you guys use to remember it, but I'm going to write it in up here. So, never eat soggy waffles. I don't know. There's lots of them out there. I don't know what you guys use. So, there is our compass, north, east, south, west. Now, as we look to draw a picture here, Forest Ranger Chris Johnson at Ranger Station A sights a fire in the direction 32 degrees east of north. So I'm going to call this first point A. I'm going to come back to that whole 32 degrees east of north here in a moment. And then it talks about Ranger Station B, which is 10 miles due east of A. So first of all, that means A and B are on the same 
horizontal. So I'm going to put B over here, and that means A and B are 10 miles apart. Now, okay, sights they fire in the direction. Okay, so Ranger Chris Johnson at Ranger Station A, sights they fire in the direction 32 degrees east of north. So first of all, where is north? North, when we're oriented on paper, is essentially looking straight up, yes? So that dotted line I just drew in represents north. Now, east of north. 32 degrees east of north means I am 32 degrees from that vertical right there. So my 32 degrees is in that space right there. Okay, between the north and east of it is to the right. So there's my 32 degrees. And that says he sights a fire in that direction. So my fire is right here. Ranger Rick Thorpe at Ranger Station B, 10 miles due east of A, sights the same fire on a line 48 degrees west of north. So if you come over here to B, think about north. It is straight up. West of north is going to be to the left. And so when we go west of north, my 48 degrees is in that gap right there. And that makes my fire right here at the point where those two lines intersect. And I'm going to call that point C. The question was to find the distance from each ranger station to the fire. So that means we basically need to find side A and side B. Okay, so if we're going to find side A and side B, do I dare say obviously we're using the law of signs here? What do we have to know to be able to use law of signs? We're trying to find sides A and B, which means we have to know angles A and B. You got it. So, angles A. What do you know about angle A? The overall angle A would form a 90 degree angle, and 90 degrees minus 32 degrees is going to make this angle A inside the triangle 58 degrees. Over here at angle B, we have the 48 degrees that's outside. 90 minus 48 is going to put 42 degrees inside the triangle. And then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and find C. And we're going to find C because all three angles make a right angle. 58 and 42 add to be 100, and so that makes angle C 80 degrees. Okay, so our given pair of information that we already know is the C's, so we can set up sine of angle C over side C. You can find either A or B. Doesn't matter, we'll have to find both. So if I use sine of A over side A, fill in your information. So sine of 80 degrees over 10 is equal to sine of 58 degrees over little a. Do your cross products, so A times sine of 80 equals 10 times sine of 58, and then you'll have to divide. Can I go ahead and do that all at once? So A is going to be equal to 10 times sine of 58 degrees, all divided by sine of 80 degrees. And that will find our side A. You put that in the calculator. 10 times sine of 58 divided by sine of 80, 8.61130605, so approximately 8.6. 
what would be a label there? Miles. And what is this 8.6 miles? It is side A, but it's the distance from what? And that is the distance from station B to the fire. Okay, repeat to find side B. So again, I'm gonna use my C's because they're not rounded. So sine of C over side C equals sine of B over side B. And you don't necessarily have to write that part out that I just wrote out. If you want to, obviously I would expect you guys to jump straight to filling in the numbers. So sine of 80 degrees over 10 is equal to sine of 42 degrees over side B. Again, multiply and divide. So B is going to be equal to 10 times sine of 42 degrees divided by sine of 80 degrees. Put it in your calculator, or if you really want to, take your last calculation and edit it. If you go up and copy it, so 10 sine 42 degrees divided by sine of 80 degrees. My calculator says 6.79453024, which rounds to approximately 6.8. That would be 6.8 miles. And that would be the distance from station A to the location of the fire. Okay guys, I am hoping that you got a good grip on what is going on and how to use law of signs. It's very helpful and you know, mathematically it's pretty easy to use. I am trying to do a quick check and see and make sure we're okay for the problems I assigned. Okay. 39, we may have to talk about. It does kind of go with example four, but what makes example four difficult in our notes is there's no picture. The good thing is there is a nice picture with 39 in the book. So I'm gonna leave that assigned and we can talk about it as necessary. So as I said, I'm my hope is to be able to meet with you some via video and help you out there some. Um, also something like FaceTime is an option if anyone is interested in that. So just shoot me an email, um, keep me updated as we work here and we will make it through. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.